Hello, this is Michael with Earth Watching. I just had an idea here. You have a lot of these channels like mine, uh, whether they're big or small. They all talk about preparing or prepping or being ready for just about anything. And what I never noticed, what I've noticed, is they never tell you how to do it. They tell you where you can go buy a pre-built backpack with everything in it, or a box of food or water, or they or they just tell you uh, stock up on food and water and be prepared. But like I said, they never really explain much or elaborate into it. And I've watched some of the videos and I've seen some of the people behind the screens, and I don't think they're even remotely prepared. I think they're just a lot of them are all talk. So I figured I'd make a video and what we're showing you today is how to make a three to five day bug out pack. If something happens and you need to just grab and go, um, this will give you three to five days of basically everything you need and a way to survive longer if need be. So let me show you what we have in the pack. One of the first and most important things you can have is a pretty good medical kit. This thing has a little bit of everything in it. It's got iodine in it, iodine swabs, uh, trauma, trauma gauze, sutures, um, scalpel. Um, it's got a little bit of everything in it, even your basic ibuprofen, some cough medicine, uh, your normal everyday household stuff also. We have a very inexpensive emergency blanket. You can buy this at any local like Walmart, Myers, um, your military outpost store. They're two ninety nine is what I paid for it. Um, it's heat, it helps hold the heat in and it's great for stopping wind. Then I have what they call blood clot that stops bleeding. And what it is, if you have a big um, laceration, something along those lines, you dump this powder onto the cut and it's, it speeds up the bleeding process. It stops the bleeding. Helps the blood clot. Then something just, it was I think 98 cents, I grabbed it. It's a stainless steel survival tool. It's got a knife, a little saw, a bottle opener, a little tool for taking small nuts off, um, a little, I bet you difficult to use can opener, uh, and a sundial. And for fun, just because I could fit it, need a little bit of entertainment, it's playing cards, but it has survival tips on the back of each playing card. Another must-have. Water purification tablets. These tablets will purify your water, but you can only carry so much with you, and you, if you have to get into some nasty river water or something like that you're not sure of, uh, these pills or tablets will, you drop them in the water, they will kill or sterilize the water so it is safe for you to drink. Little bottle of bug spray. This is Coleman brand. It's 98% DEETS, so it doesn't take much. You can put it on, rub it on your clothes, so this little bottle will go a long ways. Another must-have. Little tiny camp stove. Comes with six little dry fuel packets, pop-up grill inside. Just opens up, real compact container. Uh, works very well. Next is the white paracord is approximately 50 feet and I believe 550 pounds and the colorful paracord is approximately 300 feet at 200 pounds. Um, great for tying up shelters, making tripods, uh, fishing snares or just about anything you may need to tie up or carry with it. Very simple, just washcloth in a bag. Another kind of necessity to trade, or if you smoke cigarettes, this is just nicotine gum. This is to keep anybody in your party or yourself from freaking out if you cannot get a hold of your nicotine for a while. Fire starting equipment. First, I have a Magnesium flint striker, just basic Gerber, and like I said, everything I've showed you so far, you could buy at your local surplus store, camping store, or big box store, like a Walmart, Myers, uh, one of your sporting goods stores like Dick's, Gander Mountain, any place like that has the majority of what I'm showing you. That's this striker and a little guide in there how to use it. 
simple Bic lighter. You never know. And just a few packs of your everyday household matches. Three different ways to start a fire if need be. And if you read some of the survival guides and that, there's enough equipment here. There's about 10 different ways to start a fire if you need to. Just your regular headlamp. It's got a strap on it, wraps around your head for night, so you can see what you're doing without having to hold a flashlight in your hand. Simple signal mirror. That's all this is. Which side does it open up from? Right there. You can use it to look at your face if you need to, if you're going to shave, anything of that nature, or if you need to signal somebody with a light from the sun or something like that to reflect it. Get their attention if you have to. Very simple, just little old school military sewing kit. Has a few needles in it, a few different variations of thread. Um, great for big tears in your clothes, and if you get a nasty enough cut, I'm sure you sterilize it with the iodine in the medical kit and need to. You can use the needle and the thread in there to stitch yourself up in an absolute extreme emergency case. Cotton bandana. Never know when you're going to have to protect yourself from the head, from sun on your head. Um, it can be cut up for many other things, like you can strip it, dip it in oil, and use it for wick for candle. Um, many different uses. Um, arm sling, bandage. Bandanas have tons of uses. Now let's move over to the, the food and water stores that you'll be taking with you. These are individual packs. You drink four of them today at low, um, if you're not doing a lot of work. If you're using extreme activity, you're going to need to drink about eight of these a day, which you can't carry that much water with you if you're continuously on the move. So this is approximately three days. I have 14 packs, so that's two extra packs over three days. But what you do is you have this, which mine is, is just a U.S. canteen, military canteen. Very simple. You take that, and right before if anything's happening, you have a few minutes. You always do. Fill it up with water out of the tap if you can. If you can't find something in the you know in the refrigerator, fill it up with orange juice, your kids' juice, anything that can hydrate you some. Do not put soda or anything in it like that, thinking it's going to hydrate you. Even a pot of coffee that was on sitting there is a better hydrating substance than a cola. But if you can, fill it up with water, sling it over your shoulder, and take that with you, and that will help you out greatly with your water supplies. Between what I have packed in this full canteen, that should be just about enough water that you can work at a moderate activity rate without becoming dehydrated. Now for the food. I have a few different things here. and What it is, is I have this is what I call breakfast. This is good for one day basically, but three breakfasts, it's 1,200 calories. It's apple cinnamon. And that's exactly what it tastes like an like an apple cinnamon shortbread, um, kind of sweet and actually it's pretty good. The one I tried. And then we have this. This is a three day ration bar made by Mayday, and this also this doesn't taste like cinnamon. This just tastes like a very dry, almost like a breakfast shortbread that you'd have with your coffee. It's not bad, but it uh, says it's not thirst provoking. But oh yes, it is. Make sure you have one of your water packets to drink with it while you're eating it. And I bring one MRE. And what this is, is because you're going to get tired of that crappy bar. Trust me. And you don't think so, but this MRE has got quite a bit of little goodies in it. It's got a full meal, sides, snacks. And you can break it up throughout the three days to keep you from going insane from eating just that bland, mundane power bar, basically, is what that is. And just break it up. You know, one day have the entree, the next day eat the nuts and the snacks in it, the next day eat the peanut butter and the pound cake or the cookie they give you in there. And it just makes things a little less monotonous and easier to deal with. Bring something with you to eat. This is just a very simple, compact tool. It's got a knife, fork, spoon, uh, and I believe a can opener on it. 
and that is just a very simple I believe I paid $3.99 or $4.99 for that at Walmart now next we have one of the other ones here we go this is a very simple flashlight also lantern crank handle so you do not need batteries you can wind it up and it'll run for 15 20 minutes before you need to crank it again am fm and your emergency weather bands so it has just about everything you will need on it and you don't have to worry about batteries or charging it so find something like this and bring it with you okay next we'll come up to here Handsaw. Handsaw is if you are trying to be quiet, it's a lot easier to saw some wood up and stay a little more stealthy than whacking something with a hatchet. I do also have a hatchet I will be showing you that I take with me. But this is really nice little handy gadget to have. Doesn't take up much room. And if you got a little bit of time, it'll cut down just about anything if you just work at it for a while. Then in this bag here, I just have a folding fillet knife or fishing knife. Um, great for skinning any fish, small game, or anything you may catch along your way that will help you to survive. Plus, it's always good to have more than one knife. Uh, two knives, you need one for a backup because you can always break a blade trying to pry on something, cut something. Another thing, necessity. Ass wipe. I always bring a roll of ass wipe with you because you do not want to be using leaves and pick up some sort of fungus or poison ivy or oak or sumac or whatever you want to call it and have an itchy ass until you can get home and get the proper medications to get it off. There's a little bit of anti-itch cream in that medical pack but nothing, not the amounts of it you're going to need if you cover your ass in poison ivy and need to treat it. Trust me. Um, I've had some pretty retarded friends years and years ago in the Boy Scouts. I have seen it happen, and they take them home, and there is no going home if something happens to the extreme. You have to grab this particular bag. Okay, here I have a, it's just a little wash kit I made up, simple soap box. Let's open it up. It's got four or five grind packets in it. These are just hand cleaning packs. It's got cleaner in them. You just wipe your hands down with them and use a cloth to clean them. There's a small cotton washcloth. Got it from a hotel. Same thing here. Little tiny bottle of shampoo. Got it from a hotel. Little bar of soap. Did too. Got it from a hotel. And I don't spend a lot of time at hotels, but for some reason, even the people with more money, like who my wife works for, they just seem to like take all this stuff home. They don't use it, but everything on their counters, when they go to 15 different hotels a year, they take it home and don't use it. And one day the boss came in and handed her a huge sack full of this stuff. And hell, we'll use it on all our camping trips. We don't have to buy all the little sample bottles or fill our own anymore. Now this here may look dumb. But this is one of them vacuum sealed washcloths. This is a full size bathroom washcloth in that little packet. Cost me 50 cents around Halloween. These are great little survival things if you want to grab a handful of them next time that you see those. As they take up zero room, you put them in a little bit of water and they will poof up to a full sized washcloth. Great little handy things to carry with you and super cheap. Then a few of your basics. This is what they call Wallborn. And what this does is, this is just a lemon-lime vitamin. You get tired of just drinking nasty water all the time. So lemon-lime vitamin, you drop them in there. Easy to carry. It's good for you and changes the flavor. So once again, it gets rid of the mundane. I got the sunscreen. Nice little clip. Always need sunscreen. Don't know if it's going to be hot or cold, but even if it's uh, the middle of winter, that sun beating down on you can burn you no different than if it's a 100 degree day in the summer. Next, little box toothpaste. That's about five, six days worth if you ration it. So just one little box toothpaste to carry with you is great. This takes no room at all, all, but for three to five days, it's really not a necessity. But for the size, I just throw it in there if you need to shave. 
And the other thing is, is if you get injured somewhere where there's a lot of hair, top of your head, your arm, like me, as you can see, I'm a hairy beast. You take this and you have to shave the hair off before you can stitch it or treat it in that way, or sometimes just even to put bandages over it, tearing the bandages off are painful as hell when you're tearing all that hair off with it. And this is just for quick, fresh breath. Very cheap. Picked it up at a local Big Lots, I believe is where it was at, for 10 cents, a bunch of these little bottles. You get about two uses out of it, and just great for fresh breath. Um, you know, nasty breath is just, you don't want to have it. It's, I don't like having it when I wake up in the morning. And if you don't have time to brush your teeth, quick squirgle of this, and off you go. Now, also, you want to have changes of clothes. And what we have here is this is just a windbreaker it's water resistant it's got a hood on it. it hangs down almost to my knees wonderful little thing it's when you put it on it can be 60 degrees out 50 mile an hour wind off the lake and you're shivering you put this on all wind stops and it seems to become soaking wet but you're dry inside of it it's absolutely amazing then just a normal everyday cotton sweater you want to take that with you and your usual a very pair of warm pair of socks is socks or socks I'd rather have warm ones than thin ones and get stuck in the cold a pair of your drawers I just use boxers got a nice t-shirt clean folded and one pair of jeans because if it's cold just grab your coat on the way out the door before you throw the backpack on don't have to be folded up into the backpack you know if you'll need it or not or it'll be close to you because if it's cold out it's probably already out now for just a couple other things and these are the larger items we have a machete that's if you're going through some brushy area and you chop something down you have a long bladed knife to cut through some vines with uh, makes it a lot easier small hatchet also really not a necessity all the times but I like to carry it because I can it fits in my pack um, chop your firewood with it split some wood uh, you can notch your branches out to make your tripods your your shelter there's a lot of uses for this here flat end drive stakes drive nails um, pretty handy little tool to have with you on your adventure <clears throat> Small backpacking tent. This is a two-person tent. Um, this isn't even the pop-up type. This is the TP type. I just like that because it's uh, more space effective when you're inside of it. Two people can slip in side by side. I do have a wife. We She has one of her own packs we have made. And if we go out, she also has a tent. You both should have this entire, even if you're a couple, a group, everybody should have the same thing. And anytime you get separated, tragedy does strike you're not stuck with the other person having half of your supplies that you're going to need to survive so you really need to make sure you have everything on your person at all times you know love and war it really doesn't mix war doesn't care if you're in love or if it's a family member it'll take them just as quick as anybody else and you'll be on your own and if you split your pack just for lighter make it lighter you can be out with be without half of your supplies I have a small sleeping bag here. It's down to 20 degrees. It's not super warm, but it's not, you know, it doesn't keep you super warm, but it'll work. And if it's down to zero degrees, just leave all your clothes on and everything when you climb up into it and, you know, zip it up over your head. It'll work. Trust me. I've been out in a lot colder weather than what's recommended in these sleeping bags. And if you're prepared and dressed right. And then the last but not least, Oh, not quite got one more thing to show you after this is you have the backpack to put it in I just went to the local thrift store which we call Goodwill or Salvation Army it's not a high dollar pack it's got pretty good padding on the back straps are pretty strong well sewn plenty of compartments everything I have here does fit in this pack and the backpack and the tent strap around the back the machete and the hatchet fit right in the top here if you can see and slide down by the handle I do like this because it works for different settings if 
you're in an urban environment where you're walking, hiking, and you got sidewalks, you can pull your handle out, which is right here, and you can drag it with the wheels that are on the bottom. If you get fatigued, you can carry it with the handle here or the handle here on the bottom. And then the other thing is, or you can just strap it to your back like a normal backpack. It's not the most comfortable thing, but I wasn't going to spend the amount of money they wanted for an actual hiking, camping backpack when it's only going to be used for three to five days, hopefully. And now, one of the biggest things that you should have in your back is they're talking self-defense or protection. I keep this next to me, but it will go with me at all times. This is a Scotty 9mm CPZ-1. It's a beautiful little gun, reliable, small, light, and fairly inexpensive. When it comes to quality and price, it's probably falls about the bottom 40%. It's not anywhere near the cheapest, but it's not anywhere near the best. But like I said, it's reliable, easy to carry, very light, and very easy to use. That is a must. You at least got to have pepper spray and a stun gun, something to defend yourself with. Because what's going to happen is if I'm a person that hasn't prepped at all and can't survive in the least little bit, but I have this, what's in my hand now, this handgun, and you have all of this that I just showed you, and you do not have this handgun, the person with this handgun will have that backpack and all your supplies. So that is why you have to defend yourself. Someone has a hungry family to feed and they have this gun but nothing else, they're going to take your food and supplies to feed their family because their family is their number one priority, not you or anybody else. And that's what people have to get through their head is if something happens, the other people are going to want what you have if they don't have it. And if they have a starving three-year-old child sitting at home and you're sitting on a food store, they're going to come and either beg you for it and once you won't give it to them, they're going to come and take it. So that's why you need to be, you know, something to defend yourself with. And once again, I thank you for watching this. There's a couple items, like there's some wet wipes in here. There's a compass you should have. Looks like the only two items I missed were the wet wipes and the compass when we went through all that. But once again, this is Michael with Earth Watching. Thank you for watching the video. If it works out, I'll make some more on Survival Outdoor telling you how to set up and use a lot of this stuff. I thank you. God bless and have yourself a good night.